Hello, everybody. I am Nutrix, and today we're going to talk about the System 8. More specifically, how to choose the best plugouts for your System 8. Now, I'm a System 8 owner. I have one. I love the sound of it. This is just amazing what you can do with it. And you can do a lot by using the internal system. There's the System 8 internal native synthesis is really powerful. It takes from a lot of the um, classic synthesizer from, from Roland. You have uh, options of different filters and different ways to use it. There's a video here about using it. Uh, the video is about the System 8 internal system. Watch that if you want to know more. But what's interesting about the System 8 is the system that they call the plug-out. Plug-out is basically a plug-in that runs into your computer as a VST or audio unit, but you can actually load that synthesizer as a plug-out. So you load it in your compatible System 8, and then you can just take that and not using the computer anymore, you have the synthesis, the emulation, the, the algorithms of that synthesizer inside your System 8. You can actually run three plugouts in one. So you've got the System 8 system, plugout one, two, and three. And all of them can have separate synthesis and they will emulate different synthesizers. So the question is, you only have three space. It's like the classic, you go on a on an island, you can only bring three synthesizers. Which one will it be? In the case of the System 8, it's the same logic. You only have three slots, so which one will you choose? It's a difficult question, and at the same time, it's a simple question, because it all depends on you. What do you want? What do you like? What style of music you want to do? What are you looking for? What else do you have in your studio? In my case, I have a SH-01A. So the emulation of SH-101, I don't need. It's already there as a physical box because keep in mind that a boutique synthesizer at least most of them they're basically the same synthesis as the plug out the acb technology that runs into your system eight so having a system eight synthesizer it's like having three boutiques plus the system eight synthesis and some synthesizer there as a plug out don't exist as a boutique at all and there's one I would love to have as a boutique. I'll talk to you about it as, as we go along. So when you buy the System 8, you get included with it three plugouts. You have the Jupiter 8. It's kind of a classic everybody wants to have. It sounds good. It's a classic. You have the Juno 106, another classic, and the GX3P, another classic. All three are you know classic synthesizers. But then when you go into Roland Cloud, you have access to a lot more. Then it becomes a question. Do you want to keep these three in or do you want to swap them from another one? Now, just to see the list of it, you also have a, a new Juno 60 emulation. So I say new because it wasn't there when the system it came out originally. And then you have the mono synthesizers because the one we just talked about are polysynth. They're playing eight voices, each of them. The Nemono synthesizers, you've got the SH-101, the SH-2, you have the Pro Mars, you have the SH-100 modular synthesizer. And that's the four mono synthesizers that were originally made for the System 1 and the System 1M. And then when System 8 came out, they're still compatible. But the System 8 has specific synthesizer, four of them being plug out compatible for a System 8 being able to play eight voices. One thing you need to remember is that the System 8 keyboard can actually play two patches of two different sounds at the same time, meaning you can have a lower and upper parts or you can have layers of the two stacked together, but both of them can use a different plug out. So you can do a, a layer of a patch of a Jupiter 8 plus a Juno 60 played at the same time. So it's a massive synthesizer sound. 
Or you can have an arpeggiator of a SH-101 and a bass from the SH-100 if you want. Play it at the same time when you play them. So it, it, there's a different ways of using it. So when you think about which one you want to have, it's not just about its own sound. I want the sound of the SH-101, but also how do I want to combine these together? So you want to have probably two or well, you have option. You have the option of having three of them. So which one do you want to combine? I'll go through the logic for me and I'll go through each of them so you understand what they can do. If you say, I really love polysynth and I want to have synthesizer, you can play eight voice, then you stay with the four option of a, well, you need the Jupiter eight, start with that. You have a JX3P, okay. I don't suggest you have a Juno 106 and Juno 60 on it because they're too close of being the same architecture. You know, the Jupiter 8 is a eight voice synthesizer, two VCO, it has analog uh, oscillator sync, uh, cross modulation, so the classic stuff. You, you, you want to have a Jupiter 8, so that's that's one of the plug -in. But then you have a choice of a Juno 106, a Juno 60, which is basically the same structure. It's one DCO with multiple shapes. But the, the Juno 60 has the option of selecting the Juno 106 or the Juno 60 filter. 
And of course, you've got the chorus of the Juno and you and more stuff like that. So if you have a choice between the Juno 106 and Juno 60 and the plug out for the System 8, I would say you go with the Juno 60 because you can have the filter of the 106. So then you have the two into one. That's kind of the best option not to have just to, you know, fill two slots for nothing. And the JX3P, well, it's also a DCO, but it's a two DCO synthesizer. So then it's a more powerful synthesis engine you can use at that point. But then do you want to have mono synthesizers, you know? And then the real question is, how do you want to use it? Because what else do you have? You know, if you have other boutiques, you might say, well, I don't want a Juno. I only have a boutique synth that re recreates the Juno. Fine. The SH-101 inside the the system, eight, I don't need it. I already have one SH-101 emulation. Then the question is, do you I want the SH-2, the Pro Mars, or the SH-100? Now, I really like the modular approach, the SH-100. But you need a screen. You need a computer screen for that. And one of the logic for me to use the synthesizer is because I want to be able to load the plug out in the synth and without the computer, just going through the knobs and change the synthesizer. And the SH-100, which is a modular synth, I, there's no way you can just patch stuff. It doesn't patch. It's You patch it in the software, you save the patch there, and then you can change the value of the knobs, but you cannot reassign these things to these things, you know? The LFO out to that, you cannot. So, because of that, I don't see the interest for me to run the SH-100 on this. I understand if my computer was always on when I use it, yes. If I would use the SH-100, 100 in the software first, and then I just want to bring these patch live to play them. Yes, I understand. But for me, when I want to create, I want to create most of it on the system directly by using the plug out SH100, it's going to be less interesting for me. Sometimes it's already patched inside. So I wouldn't go with it in my case because that's not how I'm working. But if you work on the computer first and then drop it there to go in, in live shows, then the SH-100 might be one of the options you want to have because it's a way to bring a modular synth on stage without having to bring it on stage. You, you get what I'm saying. So then the question is the sound, because if you look at the SH-101, SH-2, and the ProMars, the SH-101 is a one VCO synthesizer with three different shapes. But the SH-2 and the ProMars, both of them, they have two VCO, one sub, and one noise. of which one you like because honestly I play with the SH2 and the ProMars I personally prefer the SH2 I find it more in your face and aggressive that sound you know 
they're, they're slightly different in the way they were built and how they work. One tip to compare, if you're not sure which one you want to have, if you want to compare the layout of each, if you take the synthesizer and you put it into the setting called System 100 Layout, because the original synthesizer's layout is this. This is the look of the original SH2. But if I go and I say, well, I want to see this layout. Okay, so this is the layout of what you would actually see on the keyboard. In the case, in this case, not the System 8, but a System 1. I can bring down the keyboard so it's smaller, and that could actually go into the Pro Mars, for example, and turn this one on and hide the keyboard. So I would have the two of them. If I want to compare all of it, I could actually go in and say System 1. So now I'm comparing basically the same logic. The LFOs, you see there's a difference here. There's amp and here there's banding. So LFO can be assigned to pitch band. That's what it is. It can be a vibrato right here. VCO1, VCO2. So there, there's two VCOs, but there's a difference. The choices here, the VCO1 can have many things. Whereas VCO2 here, you can only detune it compared to the first one. Because the way the ProMars is done, you don't have you have two VCOs, but you can only detune. They're the same synthesis, the same oscillators. You can just detune them. You have control over the volumes, but you cannot separate them. Whereas the VCO one and two on the SH two, you can. You have a separate control over the shape of each. They they don't have the same options. You have a pitch for all of them. You have a volume for them. You have a separate volume for the sub. So in my view, the SH two is more practical or powerful when you look at it and they have a, a similar sound not real it's not a similar sound but it I mean it's just another way to do it but you see there's no eye pass filter on this one where there's an eye pass filter on the Promar so it's one way to compare the two of them hey just for fun let's actually load also the SH101 look at the system one layout here now you see you have the LFO, like here. Then you don't have the fade, there's no amp. You have the VCO, because here, this, this doesn't work. VCO, you don't have the pulse control here. You have the pulse here. You have the choice here, but then the pulse will be somewhere here, because you're going to choose pulse here, and you're going to say, that's it. I have a choice of, do you want the pulse to be manual? Then this one is manual. Or the LFO, or so the pulse width here only works if you put manual, then it becomes manual. If you put LFO, then it's the LFO being sent to this. So it totally changed the way this works because you see there's no VCO2, there's only this VCO, there's only one, but there's three shapes to it and plus a noise. So that's basically probably the best way to see if you're not sure between two of them. By looking at it in the layout of the synthesizer of System 1 or System 8, you can really see what's different between the synthesizer, what's missing. Not really missing, what's not there. I think it's one of the best ways to decide. In my case, and I would actually combine Jupiter 8, Juno 60, and the SH2. That'd be kind of my three-pack of plug-outs for this. But again... It's a choice, personal choice. But I said earlier that I wish that one of these exists as a real boutique synth. That'd be so great to have this thing, the System 100. The System 100 as a real boutique synth, which has patch to them. Come on, make it a Euro boutique <laughs> synth, you know? which you have all of these patches, because if you want to patch them, they show you the patches, but I would love to see that. You know, you have all these synthesizers would have, you know, CVL, gate in, all that stuff. I have a small boutique synth from Rolden that has the sound of the System 100 in the shape of a boutique synth. Come on, guys. I know you can do it. That's it. I hope this is actually useful. At least I hope that it's helping you choose which one will be yours, your best, because it's really a personal choice and how you work and your workflow and when do you want to use it on stage or in the studio. 
It might change a lot in your decision. And also, what else do you have? You know, stay safe, make me more music and see you soon. Cheers.